Okay, we're well, off 15, 10. Just develop the knife, supporting the pawn as usual. And pushing the pawn here, supporting this pawn as usual, just in case the knight, bishop takes the knight, then obviously we don't want them getting the pawn for free. And in this situation, let's just develop the knight, hopefully making space for some sort of castling. Okay, so instantly I'm thinking, I don't think that was a necessary move. Uh, does it lose them any kind of tempo? I'm just going to ignore it and make space for castling. Okay, they look like a very steady eddy type player. Obviously they didn't take the opportunity to go on castle. So one makes it makes you think that well they're going queenside castling then because why lose a tempo but as we've shown before up we were practicing that exercise of doing late castling and developing so i'm going to attack their piece smaller piece with a smaller piece attacking a higher piece just grab that back And when all the attack type potential has disappeared, then we'll go and castle. Because I think they're chomping at the bit to get some sort of... Oh, exact move. <laughs> Cracky. Chomping at the bit to get their pieces opposite our king. He's not gone castle, as you see, so he's definitely going queenside castling. Let's just hit the bishop. What do you want? Move the queen, get the king over here. I mean, we do have like a half open file already and rearing to go. Was that the exact spot? <laughs> Uh, definitely going queenside castling then obviously so that does give us a bit of steam to start attacking the king side their queen side area what do you think should we do it now castle it's going to take a lot for him to mash this area up anyway so I'm going to king side castle first and then Let's start the attack up there. Oh, he's trying to preempt it all. So he's not castling either way. Let's attack his queen. I wanted him to castle, but he's not doing it. Let's get the queens off. He doesn't need to castle at all now. Now it's coming out, come round here at some point. Just make some space for my king, maybe sit it here. Yeah, round the houses. You can sit there, but I'm going to push this to stop that. So he's looking to push, 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 open up space for his rook so we can. Hopefully get our king maybe mobilised a little bit, get the rooks off over here, get the bishop off the back. It's a lot of movements, isn't it? Whew. Move the king first, I'll get the bishop activated. Let's just bring the bishop here. to try and do some sort of situation here we could press on if he does press down takes takes 
Why should we give him that? Let's, uh, oh, my jamming my bishop in. Don't want to be doing that, do we? King here. Or can my king make its way over to here and just um, sit nicely there? Yeah, let's just get the king to the other side. Get it back in the centre. It's castled at last. Ah, okay, so... Should we be mm, taking a little step? Mm -hmm. That's not, it's not meaty, is it? That could do. Yeah, initiative. Let's just push on this pawn. You know, his king's castle, so put a bit of fear up fear into them, it's going to push down, gives us a reason to push here. Yeah, okay, so come here. Mm, that's interesting. Takes pawns here and push. It's not winning, is it? I mean, my king's opposite there, rook as well. But it's going to cause too much trouble, so we need to take it off the board. King's coming to defend. So he could get the pawn back if I was just going to do a knee-jerk reaction check on because takes and then obviously takes with a check but then he takes it back. Rook comes here, puts a check on and he's got a safe haven. He can just go here or he can go here. Well he's not going to go there because the rook will put a check on so he'll go here. Goes there, rook can go up, but then obviously his rook can come and defend. Hmm. It's one of those where I feel like I should still keep it on. We are plus one, so we don't need to be greedy. It feels like it's, it gives us a bit of pressure on his king, but how long does it last? That's the thing. Takes, takes. With a check, but he doesn't have to take the pawn, he can always go back. But human that would take the pawn. Rook comes across with a check. Can't go here. It's not going to go down. It's not going to come across because the rook will go and put a check. So only place really is going to be here. So his king is going to be there. This pawn is still here. Um, we said the rook may potentially go and attack the pawn, but then he can bring his... So if we go and attack this pawn first, in the centre, then this rook comes to defend. slide back up again, this rook comes to defend, or the, we could do it the other way around, but the rook comes there, two pieces on the pawn, then his rook comes to defend, yeah, it's not, yeah, I think I'd have given the pawn, I would be giving the pawn back, but it's not set in stone that it's a half decent position because it's just going to block it all off. So once that rook's there, this rook's here defending this pawn. We don't win any of these pawn pushing type things. Push there, push this down. No, we don't. 
No, we don't indeed. So if we went like this, I don't think it's going to stay there now. It'll move. But if we did keep it there, then we would be able to do that because then the king can't take it back. So I did that in reverse in my head. The only issue was with the king taking here. So now he's going to move. Is there a benefit to us if we go here and attack if he does take? But I don't think he will take because he'll get a check on his king. So I think he'll just push down. He'll push down and just lock it down like that. Which means we can go and get this pawn because nothing else can protect this pawn. From what I can see anyway. Right, that's enough calculation for now. I'm also thinking he's going to totally ignore anything that's happening up here. He'll just start blasting down here. Because this gives him some past pawn material. If he comes down, well, we do have to take. We take, then he takes. He's going to be on this pawn here. We do have, yeah, he's moved it. Okay, right, fine. At least, well, this this is win. I think that's winning for them. This attack down here. So we need to do be sharp about this now. Because our focal point was coming up here and getting this little pawn, but realistically, I think we're scuppered there. Let's push anyway. Stick with the calculation bit. This is the worry. These are the worry, worry beads. And he's gone for that. And go here. So now I've put my rook in the centre of the board. Now these can come blasting through. Um, I'm thinking maybe, I don't know if the rook can save the day or not on that side. So up, round, it's long winded. He drops. So I don't think I'll waste my time pushing here because he's just going to go here. Then his rook's going to make his way here. Then he's got a 2 on 1 on it. Oh, he's gone down, but um, not in the. I thought it was going to be this one. It's probably just delaying that one. But if we take this one, then this gets rid of this pawn, so it's here. But he triples my pawns up. But it gets rid of this because that's. I think that is winning pushing this pawn here. So if we pushed up. He still has that element of being able to push there, we take, he takes, takes, then his rook's coming down, facing off the king, then my rook's babysitting. And then he's bringing his rook in, then bringing his other rook to take it. Ew. Pushing past or taking, taking triple pawns is not a good look. So we'll push past. King's blocking. So can we still come for this and come here to give them something to think about? But then my rook is really genuinely in the center of the board. This pawn needs to be babysitted, so babysat, whichever way. <laughs> I don't know if that was right. Um, so if we come, like we said, uh, yeah, let's just come like we said, blocking the pawn but attacking. Does he actually? Mm, is he actually looking to attack my rook? So our rook has space to come here to attack this pawn now. So if we attack the pawn, does he jump down and cause trouble for us? 
we take and takes, takes, takes. I think we're going to just attack this pawn here. It's got no protection on, so if the rook comes back, then we can take this pawn. I think he's probably just going to push. Do we take with this pawn? Because this is a double pawn. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. So this is the quick poor crook situation here. Now once he takes, do we take with the rook? Take with the rook on this pawn. His rook can come and attack this pawn here. So we'd have to push to defend. Our king can dance around the edges if the rooks get down. They do capture, okay let's just take with the rook, it seems to have a little bit more weight but are they looking, I don't know, take, take, not sure, so plus three at the moment but we still got to improve, oh. improve our position. If we left that pawn, then the pawn can take back. But then his rook's going to be on this pawn. So I was thinking of just coming and attacking here. And we'd have a check on their king. But I don't think we need to rush that. I think we can just push this pawn. So now his rook is wanting to come and attack the pawn. I suppose in the grand scheme of things though, this I'm just looking at it now and my brain's kicking itself. I'm like thinking, well, if we did take that pawn, then his rook would have taken, then we would have been just taking this pawn off here, then he would have had no pawns in the centre. Now he's going for an exchange, wanting his rook to own the file. So if this rook takes, then obviously we can take with a check. His king's not going to wear them apples, so he's going to maybe go, no, he doesn't want to get another check put on it, so it'll go here yeah, I think we'll just um, leave it like that find it hard to believe they will take because they are going to have a pass pawn to contend with well not really because I suppose he can come and attack it but we would get a check on but we wouldn't be able to defend the pawn. Well, no, we don't need to do it because it's protected by this pawn. So it'll try and worm its way around the side. Okay, what's the king doing? What am I doing? So my rook doesn't really need to, because the king now is babysitting the pawn, so the rook's going to get active. I'm going to attack the rook doubly and because the king is now on the back if they don't take then we will win both the rooks so he has to take really or move it away attacking the pawn can't go there just push trouble does this cause there's no protection on this pawn so I think maybe angle towards here I think he'll just come to look for an exchange Gonna touch this, is he? I 
Yeah, so he's going to keep challenging that. Um, because if he takes now, then we take, then he's going to push this down. Okay, well, he's going for a draw, isn't it? I can tell. I can feel it in the water. So we go here, he's just going to go back again. Hmm. So we could try this way, but then this rook just goes to defend. Could look to go on the back. Try and slide them in. And hit the king this way. So it's gone protecting the pawn. Um, I think there's something in this pawn. So I think if we come here, sorry, if we come here and get this rook up here, we can push onto this pawn. If they take, then we squish in the king. So I think he's going to look to exchange. We'll go here, so we'll get the pawn rook off. So we'll have this rook on in the file. I don't think we're going to get this pawn up, are we? Is there something else? Mm. Yeah, see, if we go up, then he goes here, then we take, then he owns the file. That's not a good look, is it? And then if we chopped down, then he can just come down here. He's not got the pawn just yet, he could put a check on the king. Mm. Yeah, or if we just take and then his rook takes, then at least we're still owning the file, but we've only got one. Let's have a look at this situation. We take, he takes. Push up, he comes back, we come across, and he probably wants to block it from pushing any further. We've already got a passer here, so his king can't really get into the game. So we could just mosey on the king up and up and up. Okay. Let's give that a try. And up, he attacks. I come across. Does he have space to come here and attack the pawn? Or we could bring it down. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go up. Oh, the king's getting coming across to stop that. Or in fact, maybe to. If we went one, that's going to be a waste because the rook's just going to be able to take it. So if we push one more, that gives them a double dose of things to think about. We can still go here with the rook. Does it look different now that we've done that? Um, King can't come back here, but it can come back here, so there's no point to that. Let's continue as. There's no real point to this particular manoeuvre actually, because all I'm doing is babysitting the rook. The king can't do much other than if it was thinking of coming over to actually attack this one is just going to get promoted or not because if he stays on this file then the pawn can't go any further can it but then the rook would have to take 
Okay, so similar situation again. So then, that, oops, excuse me. So then the king can move up a bit, move up a bit, push this pawn up, push onto the pawn. Doesn't have to take, I suppose. Uh, doesn't have to take. If he doesn't take, then we can push onto this pawn, getting another type of passer, maybe making a bit of space for our king somehow. Mm, yeah, okay, let's just move the king up. So, kind of basically stopping their pieces from actually being active. The rook really doesn't want to move, the king doesn't want to move. Because the past pawns will be threatening some sort of promotion, so he's just going to go backwards and forwards into. I'm hoping this looks okay for us, but I bet it doesn't. I'm going to try it anyway. Just push. So at the end of the day, we could come here and take this pawn off the board, but I'm not entertaining that just yet. Let's see what this looks like first. Let's attack this pawn. So he's not done that, so we did say we're going to push here. I don't want that to cause us any trouble. So we push there. The ideal picture is they take and then we take. And I'm just thinking, if with them dropping, does that make it better for them? This pawn is supporting this pawn, so if we took that pawn, then we've got two linked pawns that are kind of passed, which causes them a bit more trouble. So I don't think that's a big issue, is it? And if it does drop as well, we could take the pawn with a check on his king. You'd think the king would take... Well, he's got things to contend with, hasn't he? Let's push. It shouldn't be a problem, surely. Please don't make me have made a mistake. Takes two linked three pawns, really, in a sense. Two and a half, semi past. I do think they'll do go with that because at least they're going to feel like they're taking something off the board, you know, by taking this pawn here. And potentially taking this one as well, so they'll, they'll feel like they're in the game. Yeah, that's what we said. So I just want to feel in the game. So we'll take. Unless I've missed something completely, and the rook gets a check on and stuff, and I lose tempo somewhere. Okay, uh, so they're timed out. So lots of instructional bits in there for myself. So really quite um, happy with the play there. Um, it did feel smooth. But like we say, the smooth games usually are the ones where we've done something wrong. So let's jump in onto the analysis board. A quick flick through because as usual these are long games the rapid games but the longer than the blitzy ones so we'll quickly jump through just to see if there's anything major that we can learn from it and um, we're always looking to learn from stuff okay so white is still advantageous showing so far okay so we're creeping up a little bit and it's back down again 
yeah, wanting to get the king out of the way. So at this point, I was thinking, well, you know, it could go either way, really. I uh, didn't know really what they were planning to do. Uh, so, yeah, fairly happy with that state at the minute. So from here, I'm thinking there must be something. So it gives us a min oh, minus one. So we can now attack. So it's building up a bit. And it does say bishop takes f5. Yes, excellent. So minus three. Now we're inching the pawns up. What did it say for that f3? I don't have an f3. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. Rook h5. Oh, it's sending the rook up to attack the pawn. Well, no. Although nothing can really hit it, but I'm thinking, no, we need this rook to support this pawn. So I'm not too sure about that one. So we wanted to get more pieces towards the king area as well. And then eventually having sights of this type situation, which was going to be a bit slow. And it felt like was weakening this side, but obviously we weren't. Um, based on what the computer's basically saying anyway. And I'm going to throw the next move in. So they've dropped there. Then we came up. So before they got to this bit, was it the king thing? Yeah, I was saying that potentially if they started swinging down here, but we were going to probably push on, but they could still move. So if they did this, let's see, it went up for us, because I was saying, well, okay, if I take here, which one am I going to take? We could take here. Oh, look at that, it's giving them the advantage. So I was right to be concerned because obviously I would have taken the wrong one. What's it actually saying? It's just saying rook h5 attack this pawn. I don't make no sense. Oh, maybe it does because if this pawn does take, oops, excuse me. If he comes here, and then if they do take this pawn because it's a pass pawn. Oh, I don't think I'm that confident, you know, he's, he's just taking the pawn off here. I'm thinking human. So then, obviously, it's just going rook, and it's just blocking the pawn. Oh, there's nothing defending the pawn. It's not going anywhere. Hmm, it's not going anywhere. So what would I be thinking? Well, this rook is like going, well, I'm not having any of that. I'm going to come down here and save the day, but it can. Ah, worrying about nothing there, dude. I spent a bit of time thinking about that. That's um, silly. Actually, I don't have a computer brain, so I still, <laughs> I still would panic. But I needed to maybe do a, a proper calc. I mean, I was like, boom. And it's me actually taking that causes the problem. Even taking with this one. Yeah, look at that. So doing no take would have been better. Okay. And then just hit him here. Then he goes back, obviously. Oh, he didn't have to go back. He could go there, couldn't he? That's not a very good position for him. So it's still minus for us. Okay. Cats when they rook up, still go here with the rook. That doesn't look good. So, uh, I don't think we played it too bad then from that point. Let's go here. So the king moved back based on the, the responses from the opponent. And then they pushed down and we went up for the pawn. And they started pushing, we pushed past. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. There's no major dips here. Doesn't look like anyway, no. No. It's hard trying to find a way in, but in that particular position, understanding the rhythm of the game and the potential for just pushing the pawn up here, not wanting to rush it. We've got a pass pawn here, pass pawn, and a semi pass pawn here. So there's a lot. A lot more going for us but you have to really kind of play it <laughs> to me just right because you can make mistakes in these types of things 
and looking at the power of the king and the rhythm of the pawns here. That was a quite an interesting game, I thought, just for my own personal development. Hmm.